Our Lord in the Gospel speaks to us of the second coming, the great and terrible day that we have anticipated for two millennia. Christians in each generation have wondered if perhaps they would be the ones to see the Lord return. The Christians who faced the horrible persecutions during the time of the Roman Empire thought that the Lord was near. At the turn of the millennium, around the year 1000, there was a phenomenon called millenarianism, people proclaiming that the end of the world was close at hand. In our last century, the 20th century, as we witnessed the evils of Stalin and Hitler and Mao and others who would seek to impose a totalitarian regime on their people, and as, we, as the Cold War unfolded, many people were sure that the Lord was near. And even in our own age, as we experience the decline of civilization in so many respects, it gives us cause to wonder if our generation will see the second coming of the Lord, or if we will see a sea change of some sort. The fact is that we do not know, and our Lord tells us this, we know neither the day nor the hour. The day of the Lord comes like a thief in the night, at the moment we least expect. And so the Lord tells us, do not be complacent, but stay awake, be alert. Be on guard, be attentive, be ready for the second coming. It may come at a time sooner than we think. And so this day is very, very important. This day that we enter into the blessed season of Advent. This day that gives us several opportunities to be attentive, to stay awake, to be alert for the coming of the Lord at the end of time and the coming of the Lord within our own lives. I want to speak of three particular ways that this season of Advent this year gives us the opportunity to be awake and to stay alert. The three C's. The first is to confess. We have the opportunity this Advent to confess our sins, to leave the bad things behind, to accept the Lord's great gift of forgiveness and mercy, a gift that comes with the grace that we need to do better, the grace that we need to live a good life. We have that opportunity tomorrow evening at 6 at the Tri-Parish Penance Service. We have that opportunity on the 19th here. Uh, a number of priests will be on hand. We have that opportunity about 30 minutes before every Mass that we have here. And there are plenty of opportunities at the other parishes in town and at the farm to confess that first C that gives us the opportunity to stay awake, to pay attention, to be attentive. The second C is to connect, to connect with the people that our God gives us, the people in our own family, those wonderful gifts that the Lord gives to us and the, whose love we have the opportunity to experience each and every day. To connect with family sometimes means to disconnect from the electronic media. 
It's hard to carry on a civilized conversation with somebody if the cell phone is at hand and we're looking at every single tweet that comes across. Being a person who connects with family means to give family members complete and undivided attention, to truly listen, to truly be attentive to what that person is going through, what that person has experienced that day, to ask the question of a family member, how's it going, and then to really pay attention and to listen. This is an opportunity that we have to be alert and to be attentive to the grace that comes so often in our everyday interaction with the family that the Lord has given us. To confess, to connect, and to communicate with our God through word and through prayer. Our Lord gives us his holy word. Our Lord gives us the scriptures so that he might communicate with us, that he might give us his guidance, his consolation, his direction, his purpose for us. He gives us this great gift of the scriptures that we might know his will. And he gives us the means and he gives us the longing to communicate with him, to pray. And what a beautiful form of prayer that we have in Advent and throughout the year. The beautiful form of prayer that is a staple for Catholics, the most holy rosary. The prayer that gives us the opportunity to communicate with our God at a deeper level. The Holy Rosary is not just the repeating of familiar prayers, though that is its structure. The repetition of those prayers we know by heart, that's its structure that gives us the opportunity to meditate on the mysteries of our Lord's birth, life, death, and resurrection to meditate and to make those mysteries more and more a part of our lives. We meditate upon the joyful mystery surrounding his birth so that we might be reborn, born anew into his way. We meditate upon the luminous mysteries, the mysteries of his life, so that we might live according to his way. We meditate upon the sorrowful mysteries, the mysteries surrounding his death, so that we might die to sin and die to self. And we meditate upon the glorious mysteries, those surrounding his resurrection, so that we might rise with him to new and everlasting life this season of Advent, this season of Advent, gives us the opportunity to be alert to the presence of the Lord, to be attentive to his grace and the opportunities that he gives us to draw near to him. And so this Advent, we will follow those three C's, won't we? We will first, what? confess our sins and know his forgiveness and we will with family members connecting with them entering more deeply into that relationship that God gives us through them and we will communicate with our God we will pray we will learn from him in the scriptures so that we might experience with great joy that fourth C, that celebration of the coming of the Lord in Christmas, that we might be fully aware of the wonder that God gives us by deigning to become one of us 
so that we might follow him to the glories and the joys of heaven.